morning, once again, this Sunday morning. Got my papers folded backwards. Hope everybody's doing well. It's been a good Sunday uh, at to this point. Had some good Bible study this morning, some good prayer time this morning, good music all around, good worship. It's doing great. Kids are off doing their thing, and we're here doing our thing. Last message of the, of the, the series here, talking about things in the future, and uh, what I want to... What I want to do today is talk about the future of the church. I'm going to move this guitar. Is that all right with y'all? I don't want to kick it over. But uh, we're going to talk about, we've been talking about what, uh, what your life, your spiritual walk might be like in the future. We've been talking about what uh, the Lord might be doing with you personally and how you might be growing in Christ in the future. And I think that's something that we should constantly be working on, constantly be studying about, and constantly be asking the Lord to help us to be sure about, because we, we want to serve Him well, don't we? All right, this is today, this Sunday, by the way, is an Amen Sunday. Amen. All right? Some of y'all have been sick, and I know uh, you've been kind of fighting some different things, and some of y'all have been traveling, but we're still an Amen church. Because we believe the Lord. Now, what we're going to talk about is the church today, this particular church. We're going to talk about the future of the church and the things that God might be having us do as a church and who we're going to grow and become as time moves on. If you look at this, this paper that I mentioned, uh, you will, you, if you've already read through it, and, this, and, and I think Frank made mention that it was in the bulletin. It's the same thing. It's just printed differently. So I've got a couple things to use as references. When, you, when you're moving, when you're going through life, when you're doing this thing called life, there are plans that get made, right? Everybody makes plans. Everybody has desires. Everybody has a, maybe a, a picture of maybe what their life will be in the future, okay? And it's, it's important that we operate that way so that we will have motivation to do the things that would lead us in that direction should it be the things that God would have us do. All right. So you guys know that we've, uh, we've had our leadership uh, training meetings and you know that we, uh, the leadership and some uh, other members in the church uh, are able to meet a couple times a month and we have been seeking the Lord and, and studying about leadership and studying about direction and, and, and making disciples and just asking God, what is exactly does he want us to do and what direction does he want us to go and how to do it, right? So we've come up with, through prayer and conversation and discussion and fellowship and study and all that kind of stuff, these are the things that we are presenting to you as a church, right? And I know that some of y'all are like, well, this is not a business meeting. You're supposed to be preaching a sermon. Well, there's scripture here, and I can promise you I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> okay? So just hold tight, and I'll try to stay in uh, within the, the, the parameters of our time frame for this morning because I'm not going to read everything that's on this paper, and I'm not going to uh, go into lengthy details about everything that's on this paper. This is so that you as the members of this church and the members of the body of Christ can be praying for the will of God for our church, right? And if the Lord should give you a thought or an idea or, or, or some kind of suggestion that you want to share with uh, the leadership, please do so. Amen. Because we are all talking to the same God. And he's going to tell us all the same thing. And if he doesn't, then we all need to go back and talk to him again. Amen. Wouldn't you all agree with that? Because he's not going to tell half of the room one thing and the other half of the room something totally different when it comes to the direction that he wants us to go as believers when it comes to making disciples and how to go about doing that in this community. Make sense? All right. I got, I got that. I feel the amens coming on. I'm going to tell you this story real quick. There, are three, there were these three bricklayers on the job. None of them were named Scott. <laughs> but there were three bricklayers on this job building this wall. S somebody came up to the first one and said, uh, what are you doing? 
And this dude sarcastically looks at him and says, what's it look like I'm doing? I mean, to me, it does seem like an obvious question, an obvious answer to a, uh, a silly question. The man's like laying brick. And he's like, he's like, what's it look like you're doing? He's like, I'm laying bricks. So that he goes to the next guy that's building on the wall, and he says, hey, man, what's he doing? And he wasn't so sarcastic, but he's like, uh, duh, I'm building a wall. Right? But then he went to the third guy, and he said, hey, man, what are you doing? And the guy said, he was all excited about what he was doing, and he said, I'm building a great cathedral for God. They were all building on the same wall. And they all saw different perspectives of what they were doing. That's the importance of vision, y'all. That's the importance of seeing where we're going. And everybody uh, on the project needs to have some idea of what we're doing. And why we're doing it. And maybe even how we're going to do it. Does it make sense? And, and, and if somebody comes up to the church, any church, and say, hey, what are y'all doing? And we give them some sarcastic answer like, well, duh, we're worshiping God. Right? That's not going to fly. Or, or if we just give them some uh, other answer that's maybe not sarcastic, but we just say, yeah, we're, we're going to church. Well, duh, we know we see you're going to church. You got your nice clothes on and you got your Bible in your hand and you got all the kids in the car and everybody's fighting. And when you get there, the fighting stops because you're at church. <laughs> right? That's what it means to go to church. But people want to know, people in the world want to know what we're doing because they're trying to decide if they want to do it with us. Right? And if we have an answer to that question, We'll be able to invite them to help us do what we're doing. And hopefully we're doing what God wants us to do. So that people will know him. So that they'll be saved. Or at least have the opportunity to decide if they would like to be saved. Right? Because that's what it, really what it's about. Disciple maker. So before I get to talking about what a vision statement is or what the vision is or what the, the mission of the church is going to be, I want to talk about these core values that you see on your paper there. All right. Every person has values that drive their life. Whether they're believers or not. Every person has core values that they have decided are important to them and their entire life is driven within the boundaries of what they believe is valuable right and that's and that's just the way we function but you know you get big organizations and, and they get all really super serious about it and they have to they have because they got like thousands and thousands of people having to do their jobs to be successful at doing whatever it is they do and everybody has to know what they're supposed to do and why they're doing it so they can do it well because I can promise you, the third, the third bricklayer who was excited about the end result was working way harder than the first guy who only saw one brick at a time and didn't care about anything else after that. All he wanted to know is when is lunch and when can I go home? Those kind of workers for the kingdom of God are, are not productive. The, the workers who know that they're building the kingdom of God, the workers who know that they're making disciples, the workers who see the big picture in the body of Christ, those are the ones who are sold out to the vision that God has shared with his church. And that's who we want to be, right? And uh, do you all want your preacher to be successful in what God has him do? Amen. Hello? I heard some of y'all. How about your how about your elders, your 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 leaders in the church? Y'all want them to be successful? How about how about everybody in the room? Your neighbor you're sitting next to, you want everybody to be successful? Yeah, I think we really do, don't we? So we have to all be on the same page about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that one, we can do it right and effectively and seek the Lord in it. And two, we can encourage one another. Because in reality, my job and your job is to help, each, help everybody else be successful in what God has them do. Right? It's not about, oh, I made my disciples for the day. How I many did you make? Sorry, you didn't get your job done. Sorry about that. Right? We're, we're in this together. We're all, if, if I'm not successful, then we all fail. 
If you're not successful, then we all fail. That's how it works when you're building, uh, making disciples and building, helping with the kingdom of God and doing the work of the, of the Lord. So here are some things that we want y'all to pray about, know about, and they're most likely not going to change unless someone comes up with some thoughts or ideas that would lead us to change some of these, right? And that would be okay if it is, because that's why we're seeking the Lord. Look at the first thing we're talking about here. The first core value that this, that this church is, is endeavoring to, uh, to put into our hearts. And I think, oh, by the way, remember the, uh, uh, the, uh, the letter that was on the wall out there that I started the whole series off with? Y'all remember that? I read it out loud. Everything I'm going to talk about today is in that letter. I read over it again last night just to make sure. It is all in there. It's not like written out in detail like we have it. But everything that we're going to try to do as a church in the future is everything that they said they were trying to do. We're just trying to help ourselves understand how, how we're going to do this. All right, so here it is, biblical authority. How many of y'all believe the Bible is true? How many of y'all believe that it's infallible? How many of y'all believe it's hard to understand? <laughs> say, everybody say amen. Because <laughs> it is hard to understand. But it doesn't mean it's not true. Just because it's hard to understand. Because it's difficult to know how to apply it. Just because it's challenging doesn't mean it's not absolute truth. Look, look at this right here. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for what? For teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what the Bible says about itself. Now, I, I don't know about you, but if you want to be successful in life, in your spiritual growth, if you want the church to be successful, this is kind of important, isn't it? Because it says all of this scripture, all of this Bible, with the exception of this particular one where I got all my marks in it, <laughs> not my marks, but what the Bible says is true. It's God breathed. Remember when God created man and the rest of the world? It says he spoke and it happened. This is the word of God. And I'm not talking about the ink and the paper. I'm not even talking about the different translations that we all study from. I'm talking about the truth that's in here. Right? Because if this, if this Bible was in Spanish, and there are plenty, they would use different words that say the same truth. So these core values, number one being the biblical authority that we use to guide us, right? Every, every decision we make, everything that we do and how we do it has to be in line with what we know is true. God's word. Everybody agree? All right, we're good on that one, right? It's our history and it's our authority. If, it, if, if, if the Bible says do it, we do it. If the Bible says don't do it, we don't do it. If the Bible don't talk about it directly, then we're, we don't talk about it directly. That's our history. Let the Lord guide us. The, th the second one on the list is authentic witness. We want to put out an authentic witness. Everybody knows that Christians are trying to be a witness to the world for the kingdom of God. Even people who aren't believers know that. How many of y'all know that there are Christians out there who believe that they're putting out a good witness, but they're not putting out a good witness? Some of them are even putting out a false witness. This, all this is, and, and you can read the little paragraphs on the paper there, if you have one of the bigger copies. I think it's in the smaller copies, but even, even if it's not, you can read it. It'll be all over the church eventually. You won't be able to ignore it. All right, because it's like, he's, he's, if, if we're not going to put out a genuine witness, we probably just better not even try. The Bible is full of instructions to Christians who were saying they were Christians, but really weren't really trying to be Christians and almost didn't even care if they really were Christians. They just wanted the world to think they were Christians. We are never going to succeed in making disciples if we're not genuine. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 and 6. It says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. What calling is that? The calling to salvation. The calling to be covered by the blood of Christ, to receive the grace of God, even though you don't deserve it, even though we don't deserve it. 
Even though God had no uh, obligation whatsoever to cover your sins against him, he sent Jesus into the world to die so that we could have an opportunity to be reconciled to his holiness because he loves us. And the gospel message is the call to freedom. The call to be saved. The call to receive God's grace. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's our message. And we can't even put out the appropriate message without the biblical authority, right? And if we put out any other message, it's a bad witness. It's not authentic. He says, uh, be, here's the, he kind of tells us how to do it. He says, be completely humble and gentle and be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Getting a, little, getting a little tough now. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of what? Peace. I don't know how many times I've seen churches and heard about churches where nobody gets along. And a visitor walk into church and immediately feels some kind of a negative atmosphere. And God is nowhere to be found in that church. Yet they're singing, holy, holy is the Lord. And power in the blood and all that kind of stuff. People see right through our fakeness if it's there, all right? If you, want to, if you want to do the work of God, if we want to make disciples, and we want to please the Lord, then we have got to be genuine about who we are in Christ. Make sense? And that means we go into the world and say, hey, we are just like you. We're just like you. We know Jesus, and we're trying to know him more. Would you like to come and learn more with us? That's, 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 that's what it is. It's not being perfect. It's not being better than. It's not having all our stuff together. It's just telling the world that, hey, we're just people in the world struggling, just the same as you. We know Jesus. We're growing in Christ. It's awesome. And there's room for more. You can have my seat. That was a dramatic pause, y'all. Y'all got to share your seat now. Okay, there's one, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, oops, typo, and, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's a, a great place to say amen and make me have to quiet you down so I can continue. Because that's, there's only one God. It's not like we can say, oh, well, this guy's not working out for me. I'm just going to try another one and have any hope. Right? You, I mean, you can do that, but you're not going to have the same hope you have with this God. You're not going to have the same message you have with this God. You're not going to have the same salvation that you have with this God. We have the answer to the world's problems. Everybody say Jesus. That's the answer. And the only way to share Jesus authentically is to live in him in front of people. Because going out there and just telling people is not the way to make disciples. You live Christ. You live according to your calling. That's why it's a core value. If we're, if whatever we're going to do in our ministry here, if it's not authentic, if it's fake, if it presents something that we're not, then we shouldn't do it. Y'all you, you agree with that? If it's, if it's not in line with the scripture, we shouldn't do it. Even if it's a good idea. Even if it's, a not, sin, if, even if it's not sinful. If it, if, it, if it doesn't present authentic Christianity, we shouldn't do it. Got it? All right. Next thing. This is, this is where every, every part of God's body of Christ, every part of God's church struggles right here. Because, for a couple of reasons. One, because the world is changing so fast all the time. It's like, just, it's, like, it's like technology, man. It's like as soon as you figure out your phone, it's outdated, and they got two new ones, and now you've got to relearn how to do everything. And you just got it the way you like it, where you can actually use it and be productive, and suddenly it doesn't work anymore. You're like, what am I spending all this money for? Same thing with computers. Same thing with, with vehicles. Everything that we're doing is going so fast, including the cultural habits of society. 
what people do for recreation, what people do for fellowship, what people do for work, how people work, how they get paid, how they spend their money. Young people don't think like the older people. Would y'all agree with that? I'm stuck in the middle, y'all. I don't understand none of (laughs) y'all. Just kidding, just kidding. (laughs) <laughs> so so that we got to be relevant we have to be able to if, if we're going to be a church in this community where god put us we have to get the attention of the people that live here would y'all say yes to that yeah we gotta we gotta reach the people that live here which means we have to go find out who they are we gotta find out how what they do and how they live and we got to be able to make a connection somehow we don't participate in the sinful behaviors of, of life. We don't compromise who we are. Because if it's outside of the biblical authority, core value, then we have to say no. If it doesn't present a genuine witness, then we have to say no. If it makes us compromise who we are, we have to say no. Uh, one of the preachers at the conference uh, over in uh, Knoxville or, or Pigeon Forge he says, whatever it takes, and I'm totally agreeing with it, whatever it takes to get the gospel in front of people, whatever it takes to introduce God to people or bring people closer to God, that's what I'm after. And if we really, if we really understand that people are dying and going to hell and Jesus could come back any moment, and some, there's a lot of people that aren't saved, if we're really concerned about that, wouldn't it be uh, our first thing to say, whatever it takes to get them out of danger? Let's do that. We all agree with that? Because if we saw somebody uh, standing out in the street, right, maybe, maybe didn't, wasn't aware of where they were at and they were about to get run over by a car and we had opportunity, every person in this room would try to do something to save that person. But sadly, when it comes to the gospel, sometimes the church misses those opportunities because they're not willing to do whatever it takes to get connected to the community. Sometimes you have to eat tofu so you can have a conversation with somebody about the gospel. What are you willing to choke down to present the gospel to somebody? Right? And we have to be a church that says, whatever God leads us to do, whatever there is out there to do that helps us get connected with the people that live here so that we can love them the way God wants us to love them, that's what we need to do. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 15. I'm going to break it down. You heard it before. It said, he said to them, talking about Jesus, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Pretty simple. Way too many times the churches and, and just churches around the world, congregations, we sit in our churches and we expect everybody to show up and like the church for the reasons we like the church. Sometimes even to the point where we're like expecting them to change and be like us. That is not evangelism. And it's not going to happen. People are not just going to show up because the building's here. That may have been the way it was in the 20s or 30s or 40s or however, whatever, when, when everybody went to church all the time. But it's not the way it works now. We have to be out there in our lives. We have to be intentional about finding ways to get out there. Could be subtle, could be obvious, could be blunt, could be neon signs. Could just be a smile and a handshake at the gas station. Right? Because initially it's not about Oak Grove Christian Church. It's about the kingdom of God and do you know Jesus? That's the most important question you could ever ask another person. Eventually you'll get to the point where, okay, well, do you have a church that you go to? Where do you worship? Would you like to join us? Because this is who we are and this is what we do. You'll get there eventually. Are we making disciples or are we just trying to fill up the church? It says go into all the world. That means get them out of the church and go into the community. And then it says preach to all. Anybody and everybody in this community, whether we like them or not, whether they're like us or not, whether they smell good or don't, whether they're living in sin or whether they're not, need to know that they're welcome to come into this building and worship God with us or learn about Jesus with us or both. That's what it's about. And whatever it takes to get their attention, we should be willing to be ready to do. Hope you all agree with that. Whatever it takes. 
And that's going to be, it means we've got to get creative, and it means we have to make sacrifices sometimes. Sometimes we're going to succeed, and it's, sometimes it's just going to be trial and error. Right? How many of y'all are willing to stand at the corner down here, at the busy road during the week, holding a sign like the pizza places do, and they just shake it around, and you got, you got some bear costume on, get people's attention? Anybody want to do that? It's kind of a, there's a couple of people that will do it. A couple people that do it. Some other people are like, yeah, no, it's not my thing. It's not my calling in life. <laughs> I, bet, I bet if Jesus asked each one of us individually, if Jesus himself would come here and say, will you wear this bear suit for me? Everybody in this room would be like, yeah, I'll wear it. <laughs> Help me zip it up. <laughs> right? That's what it's about. What if, what if wearing a bear suit and shaking a sign and acting a fool would get somebody saved? You willing to do that? I'm just being silly with that illustration, but it could be something like that. It could be something serious. It could be something totally serious. Like sitting at a hospital with a total stranger because nobody else will sit down there with them. That could happen. Right? Maybe sitting down at the laundromat down there just talking to somebody about life. Not trying to get them to come to church, but just sharing a moment because they need somebody to be hearing them in that moment. Make sense, y'all? The next thing is being faithful stewards. Right? Because faithful stewards are important. You're not, you're not really a steward unless you're faithful. Y'all agree? Okay, Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. I'm trying to rush through this so I can get to the last two. The earth, in the, Lord, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. Everybody in here, I believe, would agree that everything belongs to God. And if you don't agree with that, let's have lunch today and talk about it, right? Because that's important to understand, including whatever it is you're sitting on right now belongs to God, including whatever is surrounding us so that we don't have to sit outside right now belongs to God. The property that this building sits on belongs to God. The vehicles that we drove here belong to God. The money in our pockets belong to God. Everything that God has given us our resources to do what God has called us to do to be authentic witnesses and be relevant to the culture so we can make people understand that they can be saved. Make sense? So we have to deal with it that way. So if, if our decision-making about ministry efforts have uh, caused us to not be faithful stewards, then we can't do it, right? If it means that we're being frivolous, or not using the things that God has given us in a, in a way that would honor him, then we shouldn't do it. Would you all agree with that? That's what core values do. They help us stay in line with God's vision, right? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. He's not really talking about, he's talking about something else in this particular moment, but he's, he's, he's making a point about his calling and who he is. He says, so then men, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. You and I are ambassadors to the kingdom of God. If you're, if you're a believer, you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And you're here to represent the kingdom. And you have every authority that comes out of this Bible to do that job. You have every resource that, uh, that the kingdom has available to you to get that job done. We all agree with that? Did I put the right scripture up there, Frank? Is it wrong? You don't know. I, I, see, I, saw you, I saw you double checking. I want to make sure. Okay. So here we are, tasked with taking the gospel into the world. The most valuable thing in existence, the gospel. And it's in your hands. It's in our hands. This is no joke, y'all. This is not something to play with, is it? It ought to be the most serious thing in your life. Everything in your life ought to revolve around this. Everything in your life ought to revolve around this. Every single thing. And then it says, now it is required that those who have been given a trust, what? Must prove faithful. The Lord will ask us, what have you done with what I've given you? He'll know. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he'll know already. <laughs> Isn't this great? We have everything we need to be successful in what God wants us to do. These are what we suggest that the Lord is leading us to adopt as our core values, which are exact same as what's already on the paperwork when the church first started uh, over 100 years ago. Isn't that great? That tells me that they were 
in line with the Lord then. People have been in line with the Lord ever since then. And now we're still in line with the Lord because this is what we desire to do. So we're just constantly asking God how to do it. Right? And he'll answer us. He'll show us. Notice how all of these uh, core values kind of go together. You can't have one without the other. You can't have just one. You can't have just two. They all, everything that we do as a church has to be in line with these things or we can't do it. It won't, it won't be real. It won't be God's will. It'll take us away from what God is doing. That's why I'm presenting them to you today because we want you to pray about them. We want to get your input. We want you to ask the Lord to help the leadership follow where we're going because you're a part of this. Now, we're going to close this up. I want to talk about this. Where's the church going to be in five years? Think about what, do you, what, what would this church look like in five years? I'm going to tell you something. I'm excited. I'm not excited just because I've been here a little about a year and a half or so. I'm excited because I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who love God. And I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who really genuinely want people to be saved. And I'm surrounded by people that really want to be a part of that in a bunch of different ways. Even though the world is trying to, constantly trying to distract us from all of that. But y'all love the Lord. And y'all do love people. That gets me excited. And that tells me that God has something to work with. God can do anything he wants to do with any person in this world. But he will not force himself on anybody. It takes a willing soul to be used by God effectively. A person who is not willing, God's going to continue to try to encourage, but he's not going to use that person like he will a willing soul because that person doesn't want to be used. If, so what is this? What's the purpose of all this? To what end? What's our goal? What's our vision? Right? Here's, our, here's what we suggest. Here's what we think. Let me get it on the right thing. Here it is right here. Think about what this says. We're going to take just maybe three, four more minutes, I hope. Here's what it says. Bringing community closer to Christ. You think about what Jesus sent us to do is go out and make disciples. Go out and tell people Jesus loves them. Go out and tell people that they can be saved from their sins. Go out and tell people that they're in danger because of their sins. All of that comes into this. Our goal is to bring all the people that are out there living in the world without Christ closer to God. That's our goal. The vision that we have is that this church would be an, a vital part of this community. You ever heard somebody say to ask yourself if your church disappeared today, would anybody notice? In the community. And I want you to, I want you to answer that question to yourself. Do you think if this congregation just stopped existing would anybody out there really notice if we were gone? And if you think that the answer to that question is a negative answer, that means we got work to do. If you think it was, it's a positive answer, then we can praise the Lord, right? But it still means we got work to do. Because we're, we can always be more connected. The best way to know the answer to that question is walk around the community and ask people about our church and see what they say. We want to be connected to the community because that's how we contact people. And that's the only way to bring people closer to God or at least invite them to be closer to God. So this is, our, this is going to be our vision. It's going to be all over the place. This is what we want. In, in five years, we don't want there to be any question about the answer to the question that I just asked about if this church was gone. We don't want there to be a doubt about that. We want to be confident, 100% confident, that we are a vital, important part of this community. We all agree with that? Seem like something God would want? Good, because I do too. How are we going to get there? How many of you all asking that question? How are we going to get there? Check this out. How do, we, how do we bring community closer to Christ? This is our mission statement. It's been our mission statement for at least a year now. We just haven't made it official because we've been talking, solving the world problems. We do this, we, we, bring, we get ourselves connected to the community, and we bring them closer to Christ by bringing glory to God by what? Loving God, loving people, and serving both. Every time we make contact with people, there's got to be some measure of love involved in that. If we love God, we're going to automatically love people. And you can't love people without getting love back, by the way. Eventually, somebody's going to love you back. Not everybody, but somebody. 
But it's on your paper right there. That's, our, that's, that's what it is. Here, here it is summed up all right there. All right? That's what it is. I'm confident about all of this because we got some godly people in this church that have been praying for this church. We got some godly leaders. We got some godly members of the church that have been doing a lot of great work over the years. And God has been great, hasn't he? But he ain't done yet. And there's more work to do. We're not going to be that bricklayer that's just focused on the one brick. We're not even going to be the bricklayer that's focused on the wall. We're going to be the bricklayer that's building the kingdom of God. We're building the kingdom of God, y'all. Isn't that, right? Isn't that great? And this is what he wants us to do. And when he gives us more detail about how and where and, and all of that, we're going to be responding to it and we're going to say, okay, let's do that then. And we're going to give him all the glory. I think it's great. We had great music this morning. We had people singing special music. It was awesome. We got a bunch of men standing up here serving the church. And we can't keep the kids quiet. That's a praise. There's some churches in there that wish they heard kids yelling and screaming in church. If we're not excited about what God's doing here, then we won't be out in the community. And nobody comes to where everybody's depressed. I'm jacked, I'm jacked up about what God's going to do here, y'all. I can't, I can't stop telling myself about it. Right? And, and we, it's easy to look at what's, what might not be working or what needs to happen and focus on that, but we miss all the people that are running by the church that need to be loved while we're doing that. Just go love people and let the Lord work it out. Right? We're going to have a lot of opportunities to talk about this, a lot of opportunities to get involved and the Lord's getting ready to, you ever been on a roller coaster? You're not sure you want to ride? You get in there and that thing gets locked down on you. And you're just like, it starts moving and you're like, I want to get off. <laughs> well, this is a ride that you don't want to get off, but it's going to be like that. And you can't stop it. It's going to be awesome. And if any of y'all have a doubt about that, just hang on. Don't go nowhere. You'll see. The reason I know that is because I know that God is faithful and that he loves every one of y'all. We're going to sing a song. We're going to have our invitation. We're going to sing another song and we're going to be dismissed. We're going to go eat lunch together. And we're going to celebrate what God's done in our life. We're going to thank him for the blessings. Thank him for the answered prayers. We're going to lift up the other prayers that we have on our prayer list. And then we're going to go love some people. You can love people while you're taking a nap. You ready? You can. You sit there and fall asleep praying for them. You can love people while you're eating chili. I do it all the time. You can do it. You ready? Let's stand together and sing. <laughs>